Okay, we've been invited by UPS to go and take a tour of the 747. So we're gonna go up inside, we're gonna talk to one of the captains, learn about the airplane. Uh, I wonder how old it is. I guess we'll see. Anyway, looks like a beauty. We're gonna go check it out. Hope you guys enjoy. This airplane itself is only four weeks old. So it's the, the latest 747-8 freighter uh, purchased, uh, built I should say. Um, makes number 12 for us. Uh, and we have another 16 on order right now. This is the Boeing 747-8 freighter. Um, uh, you know, the 400 freighter was our, our current aircraft that we fly. We have 13 of those still. Um, and so Boeing made some enhancements to it, different engines. Uh, different wings, some systems upgrades, and things like that. Um, and like most new airplanes, uh, everything fits, everything works, so it's it's fun to fly. It, it handles very nice, um, not too heavy on the controls or anything like that. Why has UPS stuck with the 747 or sure. something brand new? Absolutely, you know, uh, because UPS is all about moving packages, and so this airplane can carry almost 307,000 pounds of packages. Um, so that capability is, is huge for UPS. We can, we can leave Asia, head to our uh, flight hub up in Anchorage, stop for fuel, and then continue on and carry all those packages down to the United States to get on the store shelf. This airplane is up to 111,000 pounds heavier oh, wow. on landing hmm. than the 400. 763,000 pounds is the max landing weight. So it takes a little different feel to, to do the landing and to do it well, just because you need to kind of think ahead a little bit more what kind of energy are you dealing with uh, to make the landing really well? Because you have a faster landing speed, essentially. You got faster landing speeds, and, and again, you're trying to, right. to stop right. the descent of 111,000 more pounds. And so yeah. it, it takes some different uh, finesse to make it happen and to make it work out really well. Tell us what UPS is like, because it's definitely going to be different from the passenger market. Sure. But it, it probably differentiates a little bit from other. Well, it, it's so. not, not quite as much as you might think because it's really about the customer. You know, uh, just because I'm not interacting with the customers in the back as, as human beings, um, you know, if I'm carrying 300,000 pounds, that's, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30,000 packages, right. um, whether it's going to the, the store or it's actually somebody's delivery. Somebody really wants that. Someone's so, iPhone or their exactly, Amazon packages. Exactly, you know, and, and I've been on the end of that too. And right. my kids are tracking when the package is coming and things like that. So, you know, uh, we, we do uh, very much so try and focus on getting the mission done um, appropriately, all the while trying to, you know, do it efficiently um, and, and economically as well, but especially on time so that the customers and those packages can get to where they need it. So right in front of each pilot is the PFD, primary flight display. Uh, shows uh, altitude, airspeed, heading, um, as well as the flight directors to help give us guidance as to where we need to uh, fly the aircraft. And a lot of those inputs are right here. This is the mode control panel. So I can select what speed I want to fly, what heading I want to fly, what altitude I need to fly to. And then that helps give the flight director guidance for me to follow to, help, to fly the aircraft where I need to fly it. So right next to that is a uh, multi-function display. Um, it's got a nav capability, um, as well as right here, this is called the vertical situation display. Uh, similar to a profile view uh, of what the airplane is going to be doing right now. So we have a standby instrument here, the integrated standby flight display. Uh, and then we have two ICAST screens here, uh, primary ICAST up top and then our, our lower one uh, can also be a multifunction display. Um, we use it primarily for systems, as well as, as you can see there, the electronic checklist. And then, similar to most uh, transport category aircraft, we have thrust levers, reverse levers, speed brakes, a flap handle, um, as well as fuel control switches to initiate uh, fuel to the aircraft's engines. As well as uh, radio heads, we have three different radio heads, uh, transponder, um, this is our center CDU. We also have a left and right CDUs as well, uh, which we can use to type in and interface 
with two FMCs, flight management computers, uh, navigating the aircraft, etc., uh, vertically and laterally. So um, those are mostly the primary systems. Um, and then our overhead panel here is uh, mostly systems driven. So you'll see electrics over here, um, hydraulics, fuel system, anti-ice, and then our pneumatic systems over here, uh, pressurization, um, as well as bleed capabilities here uh, for pressurization and uh, temperature control. So. Now, if you had a screen failure down here with a PFD or MFD, what sort of things can you do for redundancy? Sure, absolutely. If you notice at the top here, we've got an inboard display selector. So normally we run it in multifunction display or we normally run it in nav. Um, but I can also select the PFD over there as well. Or if my primary ICAS, I can select primary ICAS over there as well. So um, again, usually we run um, in one, but we have the capabilities to run it uh, multi, -ca multi capabilities in case we have a display failure. So. Now the the systems are kind of independent between the left side and the right side, right? So the the uh, captain has his side and the first officer has their side. Correct. And then you can actually switch the data computers and things like that, right? So there's things going on behind the scenes for redundancy as well. We have, we have, yeah, the two FMCs that we have. Uh, one is labeled as primary, uh, which is typically the left side. Um, so the first officer can input things into the right FMC, which then updates the left FMC as well. Um, but the primary FMC most of the time is the left FMC. Um, what um, between the the ICAS and the FMS is different from the old seven or not old, but the 400 model. Um, the new we have new CDUs in the aircraft uh, versus the 747-400, and also uh, this came with a new uh, FMC, uh, which we've also got an update for uh, the Block 4 update. So we retrofitted all the 747-400s with the we call it the NG new next generation FMC. So we had commonality amongst the fleets then. So so that's an update to the 400, which was a benefit thanks to getting the Dash 8s. What component do you, would you say you interact with the most? Uh, interact with the most is probably between uh, the CDU and the FMC as well as the mode control panel to help guide the airplane where we want it to go based on our clearance, um, our routing, etc. How often do you get a hand fly the airplane? You know, everybody's a little different. Uh, we'll take off and a lot of times I'll try and hand fly the aircraft uh, most of the way up to altitude, at least through 25,000 feet. Um, depending on the day, depending on the airport workload wise, uh, many times we'll engage the autopilot sooner just to help so that both pilots can then monitor uh, the flight path as well as monitor any ATC communications and, and reduce the workload. So, so again, we got the six seats back here. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, let me get out your way there. You can look in there. So they're both, it's just mirrors of each other. Gotcha. And if they need you, they'll call you on the phone. They can call sort of thing. Pages, exactly. Or many times we use that as our wake up call. Gotcha, yeah, that works too. Only two beds in this one? Only two beds in this one, yep. All of our freighters have two beds, so. Gotcha. So this is one of our newer macro light containers. Uh, it's a, uh, I don't want to say fireproof completely, but it's fire resistant. So in case we had a situation where uh, some lithium batteries, this device actually will help contain the fire. Uh, as we can see here, up to 600 degrees centigrade for up to four hours, which is hugely helpful. So, But 99.9% uh, .9 of our um, capacity is a uh, small package put into these containers. And then the main deck here will hold 34 of these containers, whereas the, the lower bellies, which is about two-thirds of the size it is, uh, we have 12 positions down in the bellies that we can use. So I'll total them again about 300 and 7,000 pounds of, of payload capacity. So. What's the what's the center of gravity sensitivity like in a 747? Uh, the center of gravity um, is actually fairly broad with such a large aircraft. Sure. It's a very capable aircraft. Um, so, uh, you know, most of this is done with the automatic system. Right. The can will be weighed when it comes out of the building. Um, and then once it gets put into position, it's scanned on the position as well as the can itself. So we know exactly where that can is and which airplane. Um, but yeah, the, the, the CG range is very forgiving on this airplane just because of the large aircraft itself. But we do take time, um, if we can, to try and load the aircraft for a favorable center of gravity for fuel savings. If we can. Sure. This is a wheel here, out of curiosity. This is called a PDU, a power drive unit. So depending on how heavy the can is that somebody might be trying to move, 
we can roll it right along the rollers here, but these can slide up and then actually are motorized and can help move the cans for us. Wow. And they're controlled on the sides here by these little joysticks. And so the load crew can come over here and help use that to push the can in if it's just a couple people and it's a very heavy can. So works very great. Cool. It's a great system. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate hey, it. Thank Thanks you so much. Out. Appreciate it very yeah. much. Nice meeting you guys. Okay, had a great time on the 747-8 uh, freighter. Great of UPS to invite me on. Uh, great to talk to Eric about the airplane, learn a little bit about his career, and definitely a cool plane to fly. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and until next time, throttle on. Isn't it? Major, welcome down the morning, ready to change out for you. Please continue to change.